Nisam Bolvinaka. Um, my name is Farmer Nana and welcome to this week's devotional. The title of this week's devotional is You Are What You Eat. Amen. My sharing this week will, is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. And I'll just read that for us. I'm reading from the MKJV and it reads, Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. Amen. Um, just a bit of background on that passage of scripture. What Jeremiah was referring to or what, you know, led to Jeremiah um, crying out to the Lord saying this is, you know, it was during a time where the Israelites were just being very rebellious they weren't you know heeding any of the um prophecies they weren't heeding any of the commands that the lord was sending their way and then you know he finally got to a stage where he, the lord was saying i will not relent you know these people uh will be punished these people will go through whatever it is that they need to go through and then we see that jeremiah you know is pleading to the lord is crying out to the lord saying you know, your words were found, Lord. You know, I wasn't like these rebellious people. I didn't succumb to their wicked ways. And, you know, he was basically making his plea to the Lord. Just, you know, just not that the Lord re God needed reminding, but basically saying to the Lord, your words were found, Lord, and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. And, you know, just remind the Lord, I'm called by you, God. And what it had me really reflecting on when I read the passage of scripture is that this is the time that we're living in. This is so indicative of the time we're living in, my brothers and sisters. As Christians in this day and age, this is the very kind of um, thing that we will face in that every, you know, majority of the people around us will not be living um, um, a life that's pleasing to God. Amen. They, they won't be... Um, on the same journey as you are, if you're looking, you know, if you're pursuing God, if you're pursuing um, living your living up God's calling in your life, you'll probably be one in not very many uh, of those around you doing the same thing or pursuing the same thing, my brothers and sisters. But like Jeremiah, you know, and, and it's his plea in verse 16 of Jeremiah 15 that really, you know, really um, hones in for us the attitude and the approach that we have to have as Christians in this day and age. And what we see Jeremiah saying is, and that was his weapon, you know, that was his anchor, is Jeremiah said, your words were found and I ate them. And like I said, the title for this devotion, my brothers and sisters, is you are what you eat. Amen. It is so important, you know, just as physically, whatever you consume, whatever you ingest, will at some stage in your life be reflected in your physical body. Amen. So if you're ingesting junk food it, continuously, if that is something that um, is something that, uh, you know, a food that is not necessarily good to your health, food that is not necessarily um, healthy in some manner, in one way, shape or form, it will manifest in your physical body. Similarly, my brothers and sisters, what we ingest, what we eat spiritually is what we will reap spiritually also also amen whatever we eat so if we're eating the word of god like jeremiah had you know like jeremiah said like if we are taking the approach that jeremiah had and what i was reflecting on when i read that scripture in another translation it says i discovered and devoured you know discover and devour when you devour something when you eat something you're not only eating it for your pleasure you're you're taking in every single flavor and you're allowing it to really sit on your palate you're, you're allowing it to, to really soak in all the flavors whether you know some flavors you will like some flavors you won't like you know some flavors you will enjoy some flavors you'll be like mm, i don't know about that and that is exactly the approach the word of god has when we when we learn to teach ourselves to eat it there will be what you know there will be certain scriptures like the word of god says it's alive and active you know it cuts through every single um intention and motive we have so of course the word of god just like food that we consume there will be flavors there will be things that we eat of the word of god that's not pleasing to us because it's going against our carnal nature and that's the purpose of us eating you know so whatever we eat if we're eating, if we're eating uh, physically, if we're eating healthy food, you know, there's certain foods that provides us with vitamins, nutrients, minerals that really um, boosts our immune, that really boosts our uh, ability to fight illnesses and that just really enhances um, our capacity, our body's capacity to fight off any illness that, you know, might try to make its way into our body. Similarly, in a spiritual sense, the food that we eat, the food that we, you know, we consume spiritually, amen, 
has placed such a vital component, not only just like physically, not only in our development, in our growth, in our physical development and growth, food has that impact on us spiritually, the food that we intake, the food that we consume spiritually also has, you know, also determines our growth and our maturity spiritually. Amen. And that is why, my brothers and sisters, like Jeremiah, we have to really teach ourselves to ingest his word, really teach ourselves to eat. And what Jeremiah says in verse 16 is, and your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Amen. And what, what Jeremiah here is saying is, and, and, you know, just echoing what Jeremiah is saying is, I will eat your word. And whether it's pleasing to me or not, I will rejoice in it. You know, I, your, I, my heart will rejoice in your word, whether it showcases whether it highlights something in me that's not pleasing to me whether it you know it um it uh rebukes me for something that I'm, i shouldn't be doing whatever your word you know when i'm eating it whatever flavor it gives me i will teach myself to really re rejoice you know it'll be the joy and the rejoicing of my heart because i taught myself to eat your word amen and as you the more and more you you eat something and you know some some flavors are quiet it's an acquired taste as we call it. And a quiet taste means you, the more and more you eat it, you'll acquire that taste for that flavor. Amen? Sometimes when you eat it for the first time, you won't necessarily like it. But the more and more you eat it, you acquire the taste for it. You acquire the taste of that flavor. Similarly to the Word of God, my brothers and sisters, the more and more we eat it, we acquire the, the, uh, the taste, the flavor, which, is, which then makes our heart um, joy and rejoice in His Word regardless of what it is that um, that it springs forth. <clears throat> and like I mentioned, is the, the word that we ingest, the word that we that we devour and discover, amen, that determines our uh, our spiritual, you know, it determines, so just as uh, physical food helps us to combat any illnesses, you know, helps us to avoid certain illnesses, so does eating the word of God. It helps us to combat certain spiritual illnesses. Amen. Spiritual illnesses like deception, spiritual illnesses like complacency, spiritual illnesses like uh, spiritual laziness. Amen. Spiritual obesity. Amen. Spiritual obesity basically is when you, when you consume so much of the word of God. So, and like I, <clears throat> in this day and age, we are never short of um, platforms or of apps or of um, digitally, um, the availability of the Word of God. We simply need to turn on our computer, on our news, social media news feeds, and we can subscribe to a platform that can teach us the Word of God, that makes the Word of God available to us. So the Word of God is available on our fingertips in this day and age. But what we are, you know, what we are actually quite um, uh, subject to as Christians is there's so much availability, but what we're actually doing is we're consuming so much of the word, but because we're not actually living it out in our lives, we can become spiritually obese because, you know, as the word of God tells us, we are not just to be hearers, but we have to be doers of the word of God. So if we're hearing a lot of the word of God, but we're not actually practicing it and we're not actually living it out in our lives, we become spiritually obese Christians and spiritually obese Christians, we can't, we are, you know, we're not really um, doing anything for the kingdom of God. We're not really, our faith is never meant to be stagnant. Our faith is never meant to be uh, a hidden one. Our faith is never meant to be an insular one. It's meant to be lived out. It's meant to be, um, you know, like the word of God tells us, a lamp set on the hill so that the other, so, the, so that those around us can see the light that is in us and, you know, the hope that, it, that we profess and are attracted you know, to want to follow God. So our hope, the hope that the salvation that we have, the hope that we profess was never meant for just us. Amen. We were meant to practice it. We were meant to um, spread it. So the food that we eat spiritually, the food of the word of God that we eat is never meant to just be for you. Amen. It's first of all for your growth and your development, but then you're, you're, you're to exercise whatever it is that you have eaten, that you have consumed, because then you become a spiritually fit Christian. Amen. So what that looks like is you live that word of God out in your life. You become a doer of the word of God. And what that then looks like is because you're spiritually fit, you're able to then be, be that salt and light to those that you can impact. Amen. But what we are finding, um, you know, unfortunately in this day and age is not only spiritually lazy Christians, not only spiritually complacent Christians, spiritually obese Christians, um, um, what we're also finding is that Christians who aren't being fed right, 
Amen. Christians who um, aren't being fed right in that, and, and, and it had me reflecting on why, why is it that we have a generation where Christians aren't being fed right? And, you know, I was taken to 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 1 to 4. And here we see Paul writing and basically uh, writing to a church in Corinth and basically stating to them, and I'll just read that for us. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And isn't this very evident in the churches that we are in today, my brothers and sisters, that we remain, you know, we remain milk Christians. We remain, you know, the, the purpose of food is not only for nourishment and for pleasure, but it's for development also. Physically, it's to develop you. Similarly, the Word of God was, is never meant to keep you stagnant, like I mentioned. But when you're consuming, when you're eating the Word of God, when you're eating the right thing, when you're being fed the right thing, what you should see in your spiritual life is a growth, is a development, is a maturity. And what similar to what Paul was um, speaking to the church at Corinth at the time, is he could not give them solid food because they weren't ready for it. Amen. And sadly, this is the state of our churches in this day and age is the, we don't have the capacity to take in solid food. Why? Because we're still very carnal. We're still, you know, we're still living in the flesh. We're still uh, subjected to the things of the flesh and we're still ruled and gratifying our flesh. And, and, and the result of that, you know, and what we are reminded of in the word of God is um, the carnal mind is enmity against God, as I mentioned in my previous video. So if we're still living in the flesh as a church, Amen. There's no way that we can be fed solid food. We, there's no way we can be um, taking in the solid food of the word of God. Amen. And this is one thing I wanted to hold, really hone in on is for the church to be fed right, they need to have shepherds who are feeding right and shepherds who are eating right. Amen. Because I was taken to Ezekiel and I'll just take us to Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1 and here we see the prophet Ezekiel has been instructed by God to eat a scroll amen and I'll just read that for us moreover he said to me son of man eat what you find eat this scroll, scroll and go to speak to the house of Israel so I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll my brothers and sisters shepherds leaders church elders this is the exhortation that the Lord has for us this morning is before we can feed the flock we need to eat the word of God ourselves. We need to be nourished right. We need to be um, uh, eating the right manner, eating in the right manner. Amen. And what I uh, reflect on is the problem for most of our churches in this day and age is our, is we, you know, is the shepherds themselves who should be feeding the flock are feeding themselves. The shepherd themselves who should be eating the word of God and, and living that out in their lives is not doing that. And one thing I notice, one thing I, I will comment on is, the greatest, you know, if the, if the shepherds of the churches aren't eating right, aren't eating the word of God, then they can't be feeding the, sh the sheep in the right manner. Amen. Because you can only give what you have. And if you don't have the word of God in you, then there's nothing you can give up to your sheep. And one thing I, I notice is not only in, when we feed people something, you know, as shepherds, when you are feeding the flock something, when you're feeding, you might be feeding the flock the right food, the right word of God. Amen. But if your lifestyle as a shepherd, as a leader, as an elder is not reflecting whatever it is that you're feeding, then what effectively what you're doing, if, if you don't have the word of God in you, if you don't have a lifestyle that cultivates the word of God, if you're not a doer of what it is that you're preaching, amen, what you're effectively doing is you're feeding the congregation junk food. Amen. What you're effectively doing is you are um, basically belittling the very word that you're preaching. Why? Because your very lifestyle, your very, um, uh, what you're doing is you're not upholding the word that you're preaching by the manner in which you live your life. So what that does effectively is it goes against the very gospel that you're preaching. And like I said, if we, if we have shepherds who haven't taught themselves to eat the word, like, you know, like, like the Lord's command to Ezekiel, eat this crawl before you can effectively feed your sheep, you must effectively eat. 
you must be in a position to eat well. And once you've eaten well, you'll be able to then feed your sheep well. And if that's not something that you're doing, then what you're effectively doing to your sheep is you're feeding them junk, junk food. You're feeding them junk food spiritually, which is why we see our, our churches today in such a state where they still remain on milk food and are unable to take in um, solid foods of the word of God. Why? Because we have shepherds who are still feeding them milk food. We, st we, we, are have, we have shepherds who are still themselves being fed milk food. They don't, haven't had acquired the ability to eat solid food. Because of their very lifestyles, because of their very choices, because of their very decisions, because of their uh, inability to to eat whatever it is that the word of God is reflecting to them, what the word of God is advising them. You know, and sometimes, like I said, the flavors are acquired. You know, the flavors of the word of God, the things that the word of God highlights to you is an acquired taste. You have to teach yourself to continuously consume it. And the more and more you consume the word of God, my brothers and sisters, you will acquire that taste for the word of God. And once you've acquired the taste of the word of God, like the word of God reminds us, is taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And when you've tasted and sin how good this god is my brothers and sisters regardless of what the word of god unearths for us regardless of what the word of god um exposes us to amen we will subject ourselves to the command to the authority that is the word of god we will let the word of god be the authority in our lives and that's what is dictating our very motives our, our very intentions our very decisions in terms of how we live our lives amen and this is you know there's another reason why um, we as Christians, we need to learn to, to feed ourselves. Amen? Because the Word of God is your greatest weapon against deception. So the more and more you eat the Word of God, the healthier you will be spiritually. Your eyes will be opened. The knowledge of your understanding will be enlightened. You know, to the things, to the carnal things of this world, to the deceptions of this world. You will have that discernment to be able to know whether something is from God or something isn't. You will have that ability to be able to judge for yourself whether a doctrine that's been placed to you is something that's uh, conducive to the Word of God. Because that's this is the problem, my brothers and sisters, is we will have many false teachers. We will have many false prophets coming our way when we, you know, the the enemy will only attack something that he sees that is of threat to his camp. Amen. The enemy won't ever attack you if you're in his camp, if you're living a life that is compromised, if you're living um, a complacent Christian life, if you're living a lazy Christian life, a Christian life that is on the fence, you are, you know, you are directly where the enemy wants you. So he won't attack that. What he will attack, my brothers and sisters, is the minute you decide, I'm going to start eating the word of God like Jeremiah did. I'm going to start consuming the word of God like Ezekiel did. What you will find is you will come against opposition. You will be faced with many things that will try and hinder and deceive you from walking uh, um, walking uh, or living a life that is worthy of the call that God is calling you to. And that is why it is so important not just rely on your teachers. I'm not saying that the, you know it's wrong to have teachers. What I'm saying is learn to, t learn to feed yourself spiritually. And you feed yourself spiritually by immersing in the Word of God. It's by consuming, devouring, discovering and devouring the Word of God yourself. And what you will find, my brothers and sisters, is it will enlighten you in such a manner that you will be able to see clearly for yourself the things that you need to see amen and what will you know at the end of this all what we're looking to do is to grow spiritually is to mature in our relationship with god is to be taken into deeper depths and higher heights with the lord amen not to remain shallow christians not to remain eating milk the milk food of the word of god but to be able to then be given the solid foods of god be able to digest and be able to uh, take in the solid food of the word of God because that's really how we come into a meaningful relationship with the Lord that is how we really make an impact for the Lord that is how we're really able to then impact others we're able to if we're preaching we're able to impact the lives and see disciples you know how we're able to disciple people how we're able to win souls to his kingdom is when we are Christians who have taught ourselves to really eat the word of God amen Discover and devour the word of God for yourself, my brothers and sisters. It will never lead you in the wrong way. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this beautiful morning, Lord, we thank you for your word, reminding us, Heavenly Father, of how important it is in this day and age to be Christians who learn to eat your word, to be shepherds, to be leaders, to be elders who, like Ezekiel, Father God, eat your word effectively so that we can effectively preach your word, so we can effectively live out your word in our lives, so that our lives are the very examples that... Um, those around us, those that we can impact, see and are able to follow Heavenly Father. Lord, 
I pray right now for every single person that's watching this video, Father God. I don't know their circumstances. I don't know the situations that they're in. But Heavenly Father, I just pray your blessings upon them right now. Lord, open the ears and eyes of their understanding. Take the words that I have spoken, Father God. Quicken it into their hearts and their minds, Father God, so that it may achieve the purpose with which you send it forth, Heavenly Father. Lord, that it will achieve in all of us, Father God. Your word will achieve in all of us, Heavenly Father. Christians who are mature spiritually. Christians who learn to move from having milk food into solid foods, Father God. Christians who learn to... Um, Dis, uh, discover and devour your word heavenly father who enjoy it who grow from it father god and be that salt and light to those around us heavenly father lord that we will be christians who go out and make disciples with the word of god and we'll be christians who learn to rightly divide your word of truth father god from the word that we've ingested ourselves and lord we commit this into your hands and we thank you and we give you back all the glory and the honor and the praise that's yours and yours alone our father in jesus name we pray amen